We'll begin today with the Ripples, the Nigeria's governing party, the All Progressives Congress, APC, where the national chairman, Senator Abdullah Adamu, has been issued a one-week ultimatum by an aggrieved member of the party's National Working Committee, NWC, to come clean and render accounts on how he spent 30 billion era funds belonging to the party. The national vice chairman of the Northwest, Sir Dr. Salio Lukman, in an open letter to party leaders, alleges that the monies which were proceeds from sales of nomination forms to aspirants in the just concluded 2023 general elections had been badly mismanaged, with Adamo yet to fully render account to fellow members of the party's leadership or members of the party. Now, Lukman goes on to say that it has become embarrassing to the APC its leaders and members that after one year of being in office, Senator Abdullah Adamu was yet to convene a regular national executive committee uh, or NEC meeting, national caucus meeting or national advisory council meetings. And of course, he's now issuing a one-week ultimatum for all of this to happen and for a meeting to be convened to ensure that the outgoing and incoming governments enjoyed a smooth transition or else he would have to go to court. Well, to help us understand some of these issues, we're now being joined in the studio by a lawyer and, and APC strategist, Roti Mi Arobo. Uh, Ghani, uh, Arise News made efforts to have the man who raised the issues as the national vice chairman of the APC, uh, not with Sally Lukman, but um, uh, he said his letter was sufficient enough and uh, as such would have um, uh, you, Ghani, <laughs> to help us understand some of these issues. I mean, you've been in the APC and you understand what exactly is going on. Talk to us about why uh, uh, a, a, a ranking politician and an experienced uh, lawmaker, party man like Senator Abdullah Adamu, having been brought into the APC to uh, you know, resolve some of the crises in the party, uh, is yet to give account of the party's funds from the sales of funds for the 2023 general elections. And he hasn't convened uh, some of the organs of the party's meetings, except one which he did uh, uh, last year, April, and of course, which made uh, the NEC transferring its powers to Adamu exactly. for 90, 90 days. days. Now, those 90 exactly. days have expired. Exactly. Why hasn't he called other meetings? Um, thank you very much for having me. Um, it's always nice to be here with you at Arise. Um, first of all, I think we need to separate the issues. And what are the issues? Um, the operations of the party is regulated by the party's constitution. Now, the interpretation of those provisions, people can assume whatever they, however they see it and say, okay, maybe this is, how I, this is what ought to happen. But what is important is that it will be very unfair for anybody to suggest that this NWC, headed by Adamo Abdullahi, you know, should convene a meeting or render account while still in the middle of the political process. On the 15th of April, barely a few a week ago, there were supplementary elections where APC was still contesting at subnational levels. The, the NWC came into office sometime around March, around 27th of March, they were inaugurated. Immediately they were inaugurated, they had to start conducting uh, primaries, right? They have to conduct congresses that produce delegates for the purpose of conducting primaries in May. Throughout May, prima they had primaries for all the offices, House of Assembly, governorship, and national um, um, assembly. Assembly and the presidential, know, of course. The presidential yeah. came up in June. By July, we were in campaign mode, right? Don't forget, like you rightly and correctly stated, next powers were transferred to the NWC for 90 days. That 90 day period expired right in the middle of campaigns. And we know how rigorous this campaign was. NWC members flew with the presidential candidate of the party across this country. Many of them were members of the PCC. Many of them were members of committees at the sub-national levels. So you can't do all of this and at the same time call a net meeting, call a meeting of the advisory council, you know, and call a meeting of the national caucus. Our members but, but of the statutorily, the yes. constitution, the APC constitution says yes. every quarter there ought to be a NEC meeting. Absolutely. And the NEC itself have been briefed as to why a NEC meeting cannot be called because many members of those NEC are either going for re election or contesting for a different political office. So they understand very well why those meetings cannot hold. And that's why it appears that Salih Lukman is a lone voice. 
they are over 20. You think so? They are over 20. <laughs> because there are lots of people who are saying that this may also be an inroad into the removal of uh, Abdullah Adamu as APC now, national chairman. Now, if you say a lot of people are saying uh, he signed his letter alone. Yes. So that makes him a lone wolf. Yes, for but now. But I, some of I the things he has the, said share some of the, is reverberating. Yeah. Uh, some of those things are actually reverberating within yes. the APC. I share, some, I share that fear. It's a premonition that people have. And there's basis for that premonition. It goes back to what I consider as one of the um, ugly legacies of President Mahmoud Buhari, which was the dissolution of the National Working Committee under Adam Sushumole. So people now have that impression that if you generate enough ruckus within the party, yeah. at some point, the NWC can be asked to go. But Despite then not, uh, being elected, elected members for, of the NWC. Exactly, exactly. And despite being elected for a term of four years, democratically. Which is statutory. Statutory also, by the same constitution. You know, but that is a bad president that I believe that everybody wants to walk away from, including the president-elect as we know him. But I don't think that that is precisely Salih Lukman's intention. And this is not me speaking for him. I have not had conversations with him as to what his intentions were as he yeah, relates to that. It's an letter. open letter. Yeah. And all the contents but are I don't available think that his everybody. desire is that the NWC should be dissolved at some point. No. The, the, uh, the platform he, he operates on is a progressive platform. And one of the features of progressivism is divergence of opinions. If every, it's not a military barrack. If everybody agrees, then that's no longer a progressive platform. So I believe that his, his dissent and disagreement with the national chairman is welcomed in, in very many quarters. Is he only with the national chairman? Because it he is. also said that uh, the national secretary of the party yes. and the national chairman yes. just seem to have been colluding and are mm. unable to render account even to members of the NWC. No. And uh, sorry to just yes. uh, no, uh, okay. end here. Yes. The most important thing to him is that yes. some approvals have been made yes. and the members of the National Working Committee who were elected yes. just like Adamu yes. and Omishore yes. don't know what is happening. Directors were asked to go on, uh, the directors of the APC secretariat yes. were asked to go on suspension yes. only for them to hear that Adamu has, you know, uh, uh, recruited fresh people. And he is yes. saying in his yes. letter yes. that there was no time that the NWC sat yes. and said that they should be relieved of their jobs. So, now this is it. Like I said, Salyu Lukman's opinion as expressed in his letter is, is, a, welcome, is, well, is a welcome development as part of the conversation that happens in the progressive family. But if you decide to dive into the weeds, right, the details of, the, of that letter, like I said, he signed his letter alone. If any other NWC member was of the same view with him, I would believe that he, was, he would co-sign that letter with him to express the same dissent and disagreement. The second point to note is that the same Salyu Lukman played a role in the removal of Adam Sochomole and the dissolution of Adam Sochomole's and Yeah, I mean, he's always been known as the chief letter writer yeah, yeah, yeah. of the yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> That is the reason why all of us have to be careful when we take the content of his outburst and we, we don't amplify it in a manner as to say it reflects the popular view within the party. I'm very close to people in the party, both top and mid-level and even low-level uh, personnel of the party. And speaking to them, what I get from them is that Adamu Abdullahi has carried his NWC members along on every material decision as he relates to administering the party in this period. Now, don't forget that this is a period where politics is very active for the party. The party is involved on so many fronts. Even after elections are over now, the party is seriously working with lawyers on the litigation front also yeah, to defend and, uh, their mandate. People have been asking, where yeah. is Abdullah Adamu himself? It looks like he has gone a wall, just no, like the president-elect. We haven't seen him. Okay. <laughs> we haven't seen the president-elect. <laughs> and what we are seeing is uh, Abu Bakar Kiari, the, uh, yeah. national, uh, yeah. the deputy national chairman, yeah. not yeah. who has been acting on his behalf. Let me just yeah. ask you before you continue on yes. that point. Yes. Where is uh, Senator Abdullah Adamu, the APC chairman? Abdullah Adamu is not a wall. Abdullah Adamu is, is exactly where Abdullah Adamu should be. Abdullah Adamu comes is he in his, Nigeria. Yes, at the he comes to the secretary. Well, I don't know whether he's in Nigeria at the moment. I'm not. In, I don't work with him as one of his details or not. But I can tell you that he comes to the secretariat when he has to come to the secretariat. His national legal advisor is his foreman as he relates to all the litigation issues, you know, arising from the elections. And he's on top of it. He attends meetings. I'm privileged to be also a part of the presidential legal team. So I know that the national legal advisor is very active in that on that front. As for the president elects. I can assure you 
the president-elect is fine, hail and hearty. I was privy to a conversation he had with the coordinator of his legal team, Baba Tunde Ogala SAN, only two days ago, you know, following up as to what is happening and all that. The president-elect will be available when he is around. His <laughs> what Nigerians are asking after him? Yes. If you and see the, him, tell him that the because they are asking, is, where is the man who is uh, meant to be the president of the country? Yes. Or president. No, he's not president. Uh, 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 when it's May 29th. Exactly. When it's May 29th, the man will show up. On, on, you know, at his duty post. Is he not supposed but, to be at the defense house where he'll be receiving visitors, where the president-elect is meant to be? Mm. President mm. Buhari, yes. I think on the 24th of April, 2015, yes. Yes. moved into the defense house, which yes. is the guest house, yes. to uh, uh, serve the president-elect while Aso Rock is being renovated yes. for him. Yes. And so that's why a lot of Nigerians are worried because yes. that place is empty. The president, Jonathan, moved into the defense house. The, well, he, the, was the the, the, the the he was the acting president then. He was the acting president then when Yeradua died. Yeah, so my point, my point is that President uh, Muhammad Buhari approached it the way President Muhammad Buhari will approach it. Pre President-elect Asura Jubala Ahmed Tunubu will approach it the way he will approach it. But it's his job, it's his work suffering. What is his role in this period? His role is to direct traffic towards his inauguration. He needs his teams to be in place. He needs his team to coordinate with the government teams to ensure that everything goes smoothly. Are those things in place? As yeah, well, I, mean, I mean, during the week, uh, exactly. we saw him, you know, releasing that uh, inauguration committee and all of and that. More but uh, aren't uh, foreigners mm. and other visitors supposed to be, I mean, getting close to him? They what are the defense house to, to what see what is What if he doesn't want happening? them to get close? What if he doesn't want to make commitments <laughs> before he gets into office? Is he afraid that uh, people style. be lobbying for That's jobs That's a leadership already? style. What if he's avoiding <laughs> that pressure so that he doesn't promise A and B becomes irritated before he even assumes office? So are you saying that wherever he is, I mean, here he is in Paris, are you saying that people are not reaching out to him? What I'm saying to you is that he is taking the steps that he believes is best for him to take in the in the circumstance okay whereas the work of state that needs to be done is not suffering in that as we speak now you just confirmed teams are rolling out to get the job done and like you like i've already said as well is not a one-man brigade as well he works within teams yeah i he mean he's very good yeah. with delegating powers i mean and not just delegating and abandoning he delegates and then he micromanages and ensures that there are outcomes specific outcomes that ties with the with the over, overriding goal of moving the country forward so as well as um, approach to this period is precisely how he wants to approach it. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, some say but he's like, trying like, to like, avoid a government-to-government a, a -government sort of uh, fight with the, with the incumbent. Because if you're around, it looks like the traffic may leave the villa and go to the defense house. So he's trying to <laughs> ensure that Buarisi enjoys some sort of political traffic so, but, to also villa but we, even, rather even, than the defense even house. Even if we go with that logic, <laughs> would, that, would that be something bad to do? In difference <laughs> to President Muhammad I mean, I, I know that when Jonathan, I mean, lost power in 2015, I yes. mean, you needed to see how everybody just abandoned him in the, in the state house. And yes. it's always been like that. Yes. I mean, for every outgoing president, yes. I mean, the traffic moves from the incumbent who is outgoing and to for every the political office even the director of, of an agency of government the day he leaves that office that is the day his phone stop ringing he has three phones <laughs> well you my know? colleague uh, ruben abati has uh, uh, said a lot about that you know so <laughs> okay so now let's with, go you back with, you live with a person that can testify to that better <laughs> than, I, than let's I can go back to, to the issues yes. why would an abdullah adamu not uh, convene some major organs of the party's meeting now you've given the excuse for neck how yes. about the national advisory council which is so, the apc's board of trustees so let me why hasn't that been convened let me speak to that the first thing that you need to note is that there are about 18 organs of the party built across seven structures nationally. National, zonal, senatorial, state, uh, local government, and then local government and area council, then ward and pooling units. Now, each of these organs, right, have been fully activated, from what I understand, by this NWC. Now, that has never been the case. In the time of Adams, Oshomole, as national chairman, we had a problem with several organs not even being constituted at all. But I'm aware that the advisory council of the APC has been constituted, the national caucus, and several other organs are fully constituted. Well, we, now, as of now, we don't know who is the chairman of the national advisory all council. All of that will happen at the point where they have their inaugural meeting. The only reason those inaugural meetings have not happened, like I explained to you, is because logically you cannot do that in the middle because you don't even know who who's, who who would aspire to what position if we had had 
the advisory council inaugurated before the general election. And the person goes on to win his election for governorship, for instance. Then how do you, how do you fill that void? Well, from Salio's letter, he's actually yes. calling for all of these organs to be in place. Because, for example, the battle for the uh, Senate presidency and House presidency needs the weight of the party yes. to be able to, uh, for the national chairman, the uh, BOT, yes. uh, that's true, the National yes. Advisory Council, to say, look, this is what we want. Yes. This is how the party offices, uh, uh, this, this is how the... The party uh, will approach the, the, the National party, Assembly position. Yes, positions, the National yes. Assembly. So that we don't have we share power, we don't actually. This is how we share power so that we don't have such things happening. And his fear is that it looks like uh, that may not happen. And some members members of your party may usurp that opportunity and then bring maybe a sort of Saraki kind of leadership to the National Assembly. And that is precisely why I said, I began by saying that Saliu Lukman's his ob observations and the expression of his dissent as to certain things within the party is not totally unwelcome. It is part of a conversation that must go on in a progressive platform. With respect to that particular issue, the, he, he enjoys a lot of sympathy. Because in the, times of, in the time of Adam Ali Oshomole as national chairman, we saw that there was some decisiveness around producing the Senate president and avoiding what had happened in 2015 that left us with a Saraki Senate presidency, you know, which the party felt was not the outcome they, they wanted. And the party is entitled to feel that way because political parties are set up to jostle and struggle for power. That is the object that they are set up for. So in this case, Yes, there's a lot of movement already happening. And the fear is that once people start spending money, start making firm commitments, start supporting certain ideologies as the basis for taking a position behind a certain person emerging as Senate President, Deputy Senate President, it becomes more difficult to remove them from those positions and plant them somewhere else under the banner of the party. So, uh, Sally Lukman shares. The, the, the sentiment of very many people within the party. And we believe that the NWC will step up to, to the plate as it relates yeah, to that. Yeah, but considering that uh, Senator Abdullah Adamu himself was part of the parliamentary support group, yes. which uh, that group, which he was the chairman with Senator Ovio Margege as yes. a you know, deputy who now stood up yes. on behalf of the party to yes. fight uh, Bukola Saraki in the eighth uh, Senate. Now, yes. as we try to round off this conversation, yes. talk to me about when. Uh, uh, Senator Abdullah Adamo can likely give an account of this 30 billion that uh, <laughs> Lukman no. is said. There are, uh, could I mean, have if you look at the party constitution, or misused no, or misappropriated or whatever. No, no. They, 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 there are a lot, of, a lot of red herrings that you would see in the letter, just on the face of it. First of all, you talk about the national secretary receiving money for Oshun State. No, the man was not even on the committee for Oshun State gubernatorial election. Why would you receive money on behalf of Oshun State? There's no basis for that. Well, that never because happened. Because he's a leader. And no, 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 no. no. Was the, the, there was a sitting governor. governor. The there was a sitting governor in Oshun. You know, there's a minister from Oshun. So you cannot say that uh, simply because he's national secretary, the party will funnel money to, to him. In any case, the party is entitled to fund its projects and activities across the country. The, 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 party, the Electoral Act allows the party to do that. But... In terms of accounting for the funds that um, the party had made during sales of form or through, through any other means, lawful, right? There are avenues, right, by which that accounting process occurs. It does not occur on the pages of newspaper. If Adama Abdullahi has done anything wrong, the neck, the neck audit process will throw it up. I mean, if the neck is not convoked, the, the, <laughs> who, no, who, no, 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 no. The, the neck, the con all Adama Abdullahi has to do. In fact, there are provisions. If he doesn't call the neck, there are provisions that you can activate to call neck. And you think uh, without uh, reference party to leaders him. will be able to do that? Oh yes. If you remember the the neck that removed and dissolved the NWC, was it called by Adam Ali Oshomole? No. It was, it was then the chairman. Now, I just want you to address quickly this issue of the fears that it may actually be the Bola Tinubu's camp that is trying to prop up some of these issues so as uh, to remove Senator Abdullah Adamu because, I mean, you and I know that he had kicked against uh, Tinubu's yeah. uh, <laughs> candidacy. Well, yeah, and he even said he was going to sanction Tinubu for that comment he made yeah, in Abiy Okuta. Do you yeah, think, yeah, I mean, these yeah, are some yeah, of political the analysts. So <laughs> in, po in politics, once you see the hand of Iso, you are looking for the you are, once you see, hear the voice of Esau, you are looking for the hand of Jacob, right? Now it is not in every instant that a view expressed is engineered from somewhere, 
And I can assure you that if you look at the political history of Aswaji Bola Ahmed Tinubu, right from ACN and uh, AD and all that, it is not one where you have to chop and change the leadership of the party. Okay, In you fact, think uh, Abdullah Adam enjoys some sort, some sort of you know good friendship? With, it's not uh, about whether he enjoys it. friendship. It's about what is constitutional, what is legal. It is not legal for you to terminate abruptly the tenure of an NWC set up to run for a period of so four years. So you think Tinubu will be comfortable working with Abdullah Adam as president? Tinubu has not. The president, the president elects himself by his style, by his antecedent. We not interfere, in my view, and in fact, I will be surprised if he does. He okay. will not interfere with that. And those who are hoping for that interference, if that is the reason why all these are, they better just abandon that, that <laughs> line of action. Because it's not all, all right, let me read this out to yes. you before I let uh, you go. Mm. Um, Salu uh, is actually saying, Salu Lukman is saying that uh, by this open letter, I'm quoting him now, yeah. I am serving you notice of one week from today, being Wednesday, April 19, 2023, yeah. to take all the appropriate steps required to convene a next meeting before May 29, 2023, wherein all the issues bordering on the government, uh, on the management of smooth transition between the outgoing government of President Buhari and the incoming government of President Ashwaju Tinubu can be considered. If by the end of this one week notice, no action is taken to convene a neck meeting as a first step to restore constitutional order in APC, I will not hesitate to take further actions, including approaching our courts to enforce compliance with the provisions of our party's constitution under your leadership. End of quote. Mm. What do you make of this threat? I think it is what it is a threat. Now, does it have the, even the, by the threat itself, does it have the teeth to cause? anybody to be worried. I don't think so, because he has not also referred to the provision of the Constitution that has been breached. If you had said, okay, you are in breach of Article this, this, this of the Constitution, we will hear you. Well, at the but, beginning, he actually made uh, reference uh, to some of those uh, provisions, yeah, actually. That were in, that Adam, he yeah. allegedly in breach of yes, the He only referred to those provisions and said, okay, this says do this, do yeah, that. Yeah, presenting financial yeah. reports. Yes, yes, yes actually yes. not saying that it's a breach. Yes, yes. so and because before you get to the point where there is a breach, it has to be expressed. X, Y, Z step ought to be taken. You didn't take those steps. But can you say that, given the circumstance of what the NWC has had to deal with? What if we wake up on Monday, on Tuesday morning after the holidays, and the NWC issues notice for neck meeting? So my point is this, sir. That is where we have a problem with party members, and even leaders in the party, who believe that it must be their way or the highway. All right. You cannot in one breath say, say you want to save the party. And then in another bet, you are threatening to go to court. In any case, if you were to go to court, what the court will still look at is the concern of the party, which you claim has been violated. Your action itself in trying to cure that violation, does it not offend civility? Does it enhance intra-party democracy? Does it support the proposition that you stand actually for the party? In my, in my view, I think that Salu Lukman is entitled to express his opinion as a progressive, but his opinion is not his sum total. Oh, all right, sir. That's a good ABC. place to actually end this conversation. We must thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, Rotimi uh, Gani Arobo is a lawyer and an APC strategist and a member of the presidential legal uh, team of uh, the president elect. Uh, we want to thank you for helping us understand some of these issues in Nigeria's government. I hope party. you understood. Yeah, I, hope you understood. Well, I mean, it's left for our viewers <laughs> to actually pick up uh, all the issues. All right, but we must you. thank you immensely for helping us understand the issues, and uh, we hope to have you some other time.